Welcome to Linux in the Shell, episode 23, the date command. My name is Dan Washko. I'll be your host, and I remind you that if you haven't already read the write-up or listened to the audio on this episode, I suggest you do so either now or soon after, because this, uh, this episode, this video only covers the usage examples of using the date command, uh, and that's over there at uh, linuxintheshell.org. So look up episode 23, the date command. And I want to also thank Hacker Public Radio for hosting the website and the audio files. Great organization, community, Hacker Public Radio. Listen and contribute. Let's talk about the date command. As you can see, I'm scrolling through the man page here. <clears throat> but prior to, to talking about date command, I want to show you my locale. And I can do that by hitting typing in locale and hitting enter and you see that my locale is set to EN US as Eng US English UTF-8 okay for time and that's what the date command uses for formatting uh, a lot of its time values uh, its language and cultural specific uh, formatting so mine set to uh, US English UTF-8 okay Basically, I hit the date. If I type in date for the date command, I'm going to get today's date, which is Sunday, February 10th at 5.23 p.m. Eastern Time, and the year is 2013. Now, <coughs> some other options I can use with date, instead of just showing today's date, is I can pass it the D parameter and then type something in like two days. That's going to show me the date two days from now. And of course, that is going to be Tuesday, February 12th at the same time. You can go back, date, whoop, date, D, one year ago. And you see that one year ago was February 10th, 2012. So you can use uh, a handful of different bits of syntax there. For instance, you could do date, D, two hours ago and get the the, uh, the date two hours ago. One thing you can do, uh, if you really wanted to, is pass that option a list of dates in a file, or a list of parameters in a file. So I did that, cat date.txt, I got five days ago, 10 days, two hours, three minutes ago, 100 days, that's gonna be 100 days in the future, and 10 years ago. So if I do date f date.txt, it's going to show me all those values as if I pass them to the dash D command. So you, uh, as you can see right there, pretty pretty handy feature if you really want to do something in a script um, to to get a date at a specific time. Now let's let's talk about more of the formatting, the output of the date command. That's done, okay, by using a plus percent and some variable. And if you go into the man page for the date command, and you come down here you start seeing the format controls right here, interpreted sequences, uh, percent and some, some value in front of it. Now there's a whole lot of them. I've talked about some of them in the write-up. I'm just going to show you a quick example with ones that I use a lot. It was percent M, percent capital Y, percent M, percent D, and that's going to give you the year, the month, and the day. Now I can throw in hyphens there if I wanted to and that's going to put hyphens in there so it inter it doesn't interpret the hyphen as it is right there as anything but it, it still interprets those variables variables anywhere that there is a percent now a good example here is uh, putting this together so if I do date plus percent C it shows me the century which is the first two years of the year first two digits of the year command so it says 20th century now if I put that together with the dash D 100 years which is going to show me 100 years in the future, and then do plus C, Oop. plus percent C, I get 21, so it's going to be 21. Uh, so if I just got rid of this, 100 years in the future, you see the right here, the year command would say 2013, but going back, I only see uh, that part of the century. Uh, so that's that's pretty handy. Now, let's let's tie it all together again with something else. Let's Let's do this. And I'm going to put a phrase in here. And because I am going to do that, I have to put it in quotes. 
or double quotes or single quotes, but I'm going to put it in double quotes. So I start to open it up with the plus and I'm going to pass this. Today is percent A, capital A, the percent D of percent B. Have a great day. Now, the percent capital A is for day of the week. And that's the full day of the week string. Percent D is for the day of the month. And then percent B is the full name of the month. So when I hit enter, it fills it all in. Today is Sunday, the 10th of February. Have a great day. Now notice, that, again, I, I emph emphasize I had to put this all in double quotes because it, if I left out the double quotes, I would have been greeted with an error, uh, extra operand, and so that would have thrown that error right there. <coughs> so now, I'm trying to think, did I show this command date? D one year ago? No, I didn't. This is going to show me the um, day one of a year ago today. The day of a year ago today. So if I do the day is, so I do percent A, percent Y, percent M, percent D, that's going to throw an error. Make sure you have them both sections in double quotes. And I do that and it shows me a year ago the day was Friday, and that's the abbreviation of Friday, and it shows a 2012-020-10. So February 10th, 2012, the day of the week, a year ago, was Friday. So really cool stuff that you could do with the date command to get get uh, some bits and pieces of information. Now, by default, if I do day plus percent D, you notice it's 10, but if I did date D... June 1st, 2013, okay, you see that uh, it does a nice job of interpreting, but if I just had um, plus month plus or percent D, it puts the zeros in there on some of those. Now, you can change those paddings. It's called paddings right there. By default, the padding, any padding value is going to be zero. You can change that with different characters. Like, um, if I wanted to replace the, uh, the zero with a space, or get rid of them completely, sorry, the hyphen gets rid of them, but if I wanted to replace them with a space... I use underscores, and you see that it puts a space in there. Okay, so that that's pretty handy. Now, there's some other different things that you can do, like date percent A shows the shows the uh, full day of the week. I can capitalize that, or it will do capitalization where possible, if it's possible, by putting the caret in between there, and I get the full date capitalized. Now the uh, opposite of that is to put the pound sign and you don't always get the, the results you're looking for. Um, I think it's only interpreting uh, well I don't know why it, it, it sets them all as capital letters but uh, a way I can show that example is to use the time zone. Ah, Why do I keep forgetting a plus? The time zone but if I wouldn't have changed the time zone to all lowercase letters I put that in there, and you see that it changes them to all lowercase letters. So if you're really looking to manipulate those strings and changing lowercase and uppercase, test it out before you actually go ahead and use it, because your results may not be what you expect. All right, there's one other option to padding that I'll talk about. And let's see, that's date. If I do percent %y, you see it's a four-digit year. If I do percent %8y, oops, sorry, no, percent %8y, it adds padding to the front to make it um, a total of eight fields long. And you see there that it added four zeros. Now, you might say, what happens if I choose a lesser option? Well, it doesn't truncate, so just be aware of that. It only adds on to there. Now, and again, you can further change this by, by putting in like a hyphen, and now they all become spaces. Uh, and if I put in a dash, it gets rid of them, so it kind of makes it you know, pointless. I took out the, the extra fields in there. So that's uh, some padding examples right there. Right there. Uh, now, we have uh, some specific RFCs that are defined. Uh, well, one is universal time. So if I do date U, it shows me uh, the universal time. So that's a little bit different than the current time right here right now. That shows UTC time. So that's 
as you can see, a five hour difference from where I am in Eastern Time. Um, there's a date RFC 2A22 which shows the date format like that. And if you wanted to, you can um, you can you can pull stuff out of there. Well, it doesn't allow you to do different multiple formatting there, so be aware of that. But there's other one there, the di a date ISO 8601, which is capital I, and it just shows by default the date, so 2013-020-10, and then there's a date RFC 3339, and if I execute that, it throws an error, and that's because it's looking for a time spec. Uh, so that requires a time spec to be added to it. So if I did uh, date on there, it shows me the date. Now, time specs, there's four, I believe it's four options. Um, one is date, one is hour, one is minute, one is seconds, and the other is nanoseconds. Um, well, so that's five. But the RFC 3339 only accepts date and seconds and nanoseconds. It will not accept hour. So wait, I said date, hour, seconds, nanoseconds, not minute. I'm sorry, minute's not one of them. The uh, dash I option accepts time spec parameters, min, uh, date, it does hour, and what it does is you see that it tacks on the hour here along with the time zone differential, 0500. So if I did uh, See, there's no minute. Well, actually, yeah, there is a minute. I'm sorry, I was wrong. So, and, and second, and then nanosecond. So you see that it keeps adding on to it little by little, but you always still get the time zone representation. So it's uh, the date, and then a T for time, and then it, you can go up to minute seconds and nanoseconds. With RFC 3339, R, oops. Oh, RFC-3339, remember that throws the error, I could do date, I can't do minute, I can't do, it shows me right there, oh, I'm not going to continue throwing errors for you here. So if I do seconds, you see one of the big differences, it throws a colon in there, uh, it shows the hour and minutes of the time zone offset, so it shows a colon instead of just making it straight, and if I do nanoseconds, it adds the nanoseconds on there like it did for the I command. So there you go. That's some of the basics of using date command to show and format date. Uh, you can use, there's an option here to get a modification time of the date command. So if I do date.txt, that file I was talking about before, you see that that file was created on February 10th today at 4.57 uh, and 16 seconds. So if I actually edit this file and say um, 500 years ago, and if I did date r date command, you see that now it has changed to this time. And let's uh, let's let's run it. 500 years ago, it was Monday, February 10th, the year 1513. How about that? Uh, 500 years ago. I wasn't here 500 years ago. That is the date command in a nutshell. The only thing I have not shown is setting the date and. That's what the dat date dash s command. So I, I use that, and I can say um, 2012 01 13, but I can't do that because I'm not root, so I'd have to actually put that in sudo and type my password incorrectly. And now when I run the date command, it shows me as Friday. January 13th, 2012. Uh, and it also noted it set <coughs> the hour, because I didn't specify the hour. So if I wanted to do that, I could do date, uh, set 2013, uh, 02, I'll, I'll set it for a couple, what is it, the 10th today? I'll set it for the 8th, 08 and 10, 000. zero, zero. Oh, I forgot to put sudo in front of it. 
And notice that it set the hour now <coughs> and left the minutes and seconds. So that is the date command in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this episode. My name is Dan Washko. If you haven't already done so, head over to the website, check out the write-up and the audio, and support Hacker Public Radio, and have a great day.